For this look at lesson, we'll be looking at the composition of air and the respiratory system. So we'll start by looking at the structure of the lungs. There are four main areas of the lungs that you need to know about. So the lungs themselves, they are the right lung and the left lung. We have two of these and, and these allow movement of air in and out of the body. And this is known as ventilation. So when air enters the body, this is known as inspiration. And this is the process of breathing in. Um, and then expiration is the process of breathing out. And that is how air exits the body. From the lungs, we've got the bronchi or the bronchioles. Um, so air travels to the lungs via the bronchi. These are the big strands that you can see on the diagram there. As air travels through the bronchi, the passages get smaller and the bronchi divides. The smaller airways towards the end, they are the bronchioles. The bronchioles then carry the air to the alveoli. The alveoli are the little sacs that are on the outermost branches of the bronchioles. It is in the alveoli that gaseous exchange takes place. And the diaphragm that you can see at the bottom, this is the muscle that sits under the two lung sacs. As we breathe in, it contracts and flattens. This allows more space in the chest so the lungs can expand to pull in air. As we breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes and returns to its natural dome shape. This makes the chest cavity smaller and therefore forces out the air. As I said previously, gaseous exchange takes place in the alveoli. Gases move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So in our lungs, there is a high level of carbon dioxide as our bodies have used the oxygen from the air and now need to expel that carbon dioxide. In the open air, there is low levels of CO2 because oxygen is plentiful. Therefore, when we breathe, we are filling up our lungs with oxygen and forcing the carbon dioxide out. The alveoli are very tiny air sacs and they have very, very thin walls. The thinness of these walls allows for gaseous exchange to take place. When moving oxygen, it goes from the alveoli to the capillaries. This is because there is a high concentration of, of oxygen in the alveoli and it is moving to a, an area of low concentration in the capillaries. The reverse happens when we are moving carbon dioxide. So gas still moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, but with carbon dioxide, it's passed from the capillaries to the alveoli to be expelled from the body. During exercise, particularly aerobic exercise, when we are breathing in and we need to get a lot of air in, um, our gaseous exchange increases because we need to take in more oxygen and get rid of more carbon dioxide. It is after anaerobic activity um, when our breathing rate has increased that we allow increased gaseous exchange um, to aid recovery. So the air around us is made up of three main gases. So we've got oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. And then there is a small amount made up of a variety of other gases. The levels of these gases change dependent on whether you are breathing in or breathing out. So for example, we breathe in 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen and only 0.04% carbon dioxide. So the body does not use the nitrogen, nor does it produce it as a byproduct or a waste product. The body uses the carbon dioxide and the body produces carbon, the 
sorry, the body uses oxygen and the body produces carbon dioxide. Therefore, when we breathe out, we are left with 78% nitrogen, 16% oxygen and 4% carbon dioxide. When exercising, as we are breathing a lot heavier, um, this means that we need to take in more oxygen with, e with each breath. So as we breathe, more oxygen's coming in. And as we are taking in more oxygen, we are going to be expelling more carbon dioxide. The percentages will remain as the air structure cannot change, but it is the volume being breathed in and out that will change. So the lung volume is the overall capacity of the lungs. This is how much air the lungs can hold. The greater the volume, the more air that they can hold. So your tidal volume is about the amount of air um, breathed in, in a normal breath. When our bodies are out at rest, um, breathing is slower and shallower than when we are exercising. This is because the demand for energy is lesser. So there's less air containing oxygen needs to be breathed in, less carbon dioxide needs to be breathed out. During exercise, tidal volume increases because we need to inhale more oxygen to help with energy production and exhale more carbon dioxide as it is a waste product. Your vital capacity is the amount of air the lungs can expire after the maximum they can inspire. So basically what this means is vital capacity is measured by taking the deepest breath in as possible, then measuring the volume of air exhaled. What happens to our tidal volume during exercise is an increased airflow um, means that we are taking in more, more air to get in the more oxygen to move to our working muscles to enable us to work at the same level for longer. So we know that we need oxygen as part of energy production. So if we are not breathing in that oxygen, we are not going to have the energy to last for the full length of the activity. That is why during aerobic exercise, we do not need that oxygen because we're not trying to last for a long period of time. The energy production is coming from somewhere else. <laughs> 